What's up, everybody? Back here for episode 68 of the Pit Side Podcast. We've got a special episode for you. We're kind of traveling this yeah. week. We're going we're gonna to talk to Andy Piercefield, who um, I'm not going to give it away yet, but has gone to, uh, to visit someone else that we know through our league. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that and, and visit with him here in just a couple minutes. Welcome to the Pit Side Podcast, where we discuss the latest news and developments in the Coast to Coast Racing League, as well as other racing news inside and out of iRacing. Here's your host, the ALA outlaw, Preston Cranmer, and Roger, the bass man, Craig. Yep, so we're back. Like I said, this is a, kind of a unique episode we've got here this week. Uh, we're, we're not going to spend too much time, just Roger and I here, because I think you guys are going to want to see what Andy yeah, has to show you. You want to see this, man. It's just, I've, I've, he's, he sent me a couple of, uh, like, um, uh, just uh, pictures to kind of just get me excited. And teaser I, shots, a, yeah. Oh, teaser shots, and and I've been, I've been waiting. So yeah, this uh, you know th- this is the the podium, uh, the pit side podium uh, section where we cover three top three items of the week. This has got to be number one, um, and we're gonna get to it pretty quick because uh, just guys, you gotta check this out. It's just the dream. The, it is. It's the dream rig. Yeah, you know, for I, sure. I've never seen uh, anything like it. Like I, I mean, it's just top to bottom. I, well, you'll see it. I, I don't want to get into it too much, yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, blown yeah. away. I mean, absolutely blown away. Yeah. So, so uh, the the uh, you know P three or whatever the, the the third one would be, um, just uh, your 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 karting. Uh, we we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, so so last weekend was our first race. It's supposed to be the second week, but um, the first week rained out. So it was really kind of our our shakedown week. Um, so we we got out to the track still had a couple of things to do when we got there so that was a little nerve-wracking got everything settled in um got registered and i can't tell you that it was very encouraging the people that are running my division are all or at least the guys i had a chance to speak to are very nice the guy that was parked next to us helped us the entire time i mean he spent probably half his day kind of you know giving tips and stuff and just making suggestions and i need that i mean it's it's i i was pretty confident going out that we had everything the way it was supposed to but you know i'm still learning and uh so that was real nice and i was also very surprised at the number of people that traveled so one of the other guys that i talked to quite a bit was from delaware right so he was hours away and so a lot of people trailered some some big money stuff in there too um so we went out and uh Went and we got there was an open practice session which not everybody takes but I wanted to get the card out there and started noticing I was having a little trouble on the straightaways bogging down a little bit so we were, we were working on that throughout the day um, took a couple of divisional practice sessions so if you're not if you don't know I'm running the uh, box stock predator you know just get going learn how to work on the chassis everything and um, so I was still having some trouble on the on the straightaways so I, we were trying kind of everything we could adjusting idle screws and everything. And um, and kind of we're coming to the conclusion that the tank might not be venting well. Now there's it, because it's box stock. There's pretty stiff regulations as to far as what you're allowed to actually change. It's the list of things you can change is a whole lot shorter than the or excuse me the list of things yeah the the list of things you can't change is pretty much everything except for what they list that you can. So like we have a vent uh, vent hole drilled in the top of the cap which you can't change the size of. So we're a little bit stuck. So we went out for the second practice, and uh, you know, I'd go it'd go off fine until I come out of the corner, hit straightaway, put the power down. And as I was coming down, coming out of turn four, uh, I, I was kind of at the top of the track, knowing I was going to be slower. And a guy went to go underneath me, and right as he was going by, I got the power back. You know, I could get back into the throttle. And so I hit it, and he didn't realize I stuck with him, and he swung out wide to go to dive into one, and uh, just absolutely doored me. And uh, so that was that was kind of my first wake up call because it just I mean it was it was funny like it didn't didn't really scare me or anything but it did it sent me shooting off track spinning you know I it sent me up a little ways and I was still in the tacky part of the track so I had it for a second and I drifted a little further into where it was real slick and then it was just I was along for the ride I steered in into the skid out of the skid nothing worked I just looping around skidded off the track so that was funny we had a good laugh and um you know it's one of the guys that was there crewing for me was i think he was already in case the guy was mad or whatever it was i was like just calm down it's stupid you know it's not a big deal so um we went out for qualifying 
Same problem. We had kind of resolved to the fact that we weren't going to be able to fix the issue before the race. Still having it, so we decided to trailer it uh, last week just before the feature event. Um, they were nice enough to give me a couple of test laps, too, and when we tried some Hail Mary stuff at the end and just couldn't get it worked out. So we've, we've already kind of made the determination that, like I said, we knew it was the tank one venting well. So just had a couple of changes we had to make. Uh, we're remote mounting the fuel tank now rather than running the one on the top of the motor, um, which the majority of guys do, do. Not everybody does. But from everybody I've talked to, that alleviates these issues, and it's more often than not why people do it. So we go back uh, April 9th. Will be it's a double points night since the first week rained out and it's a, be our official first points night because it does alternate so a uh, lot on the line that that race but I think we'll be a little bit better prepared and have a little bit more knowledge under our belt so it was it was a good event we had a good time had lots of people there in the pits and that was uh got a little bit crazy because everybody's kind of hanging out and you know but yeah. learned so a lot. That- question uh, how many incident points did you get you well it, i guess i guess probably four it was a pretty good <laughs> hit i i bet i bent a rim a little bit it didn't affect me and then i i got some pretty good donuts down the side of the the new wrap too well, that, so that, that's what your dad said that you've uh you've uh, christened the, the wrap and yeah got a few skid marks oh there. yeah oh yeah well, that's awesome so uh <laughs> So we'll be looking forward to uh, the next report on that. Yeah, and I should have some GoPro video next time, too. I plan to this time, but apparently there's some rules about where you can mount it. And with some of the things we had to get done before we took the track, that mounting the GoPro became a uh, not a priority. So yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll have that set up next week, too. That's cool. That's cool. I can't wait. Um, uh, the P2 uh, discussion here would be uh, just the league. You know, things are starting to now. We're into... <laughs> We're rolling into week three. Uh, you know, finally, uh, most of the, the, the schedule's been resorted. Uh, the, um, you know, I, I'm finally getting, to, instead of just doing uh, seat of the pants uh, scheduling sessions at the last second, uh, starting to, you know, schedule them out for the rest of the season. So uh, everything's, everything seems to be going good. We've had a couple of changes. Uh, we made the change uh, to bring the 305s back. 305s are the most popular. Uh, you know, we were trying to... Uh, bring the, the UMPs in, people wanted the UMPs, uh, and um, we I know on Friday Friday Night Lights, they run 305s, we thought, okay, maybe that would, but uh, the King of Dirt series, we've, we've taken away. I, I started looking at in a little more depth at the numbers. The last four or five races were like 10 and under. Yeah. And so that's, the UMPs and the 410s are getting good car counts, and uh, and, and uh, uh I don't think it was on that on the thing with Andy, but uh, Andy, you know, the the pro lates are getting good car counts too. Yeah. So that's everything's uh, ticking. And, and buddy, we gotta we gotta give a call out to our broadcasters. My God, are these guys awesome? Like they're just everybody is there for each other. Um, we had a case the other night where Marty had a rained out baseball game, so he had to do it Thursday. He was gonna miss the first race, not the whole night, the first race, and. Uh, Andy and uh, John Hines stepped in and covered that race for him. And then I don't think anybody even noticed on the broadcast. They just flipped it. And uh, what it, I mean, it's just awesome that we had a night earlier where um, Andy couldn't make it. And and Joe Halter just, I got it. Like, and, and, uh, and so I, and I think that's going to even get better. Like those guys are working together. They'll make each other better. And, uh, but I can't say enough. I've never seen cooperation levels between, broadcast teams and uh well and and the really the encouraging part to me was and obviously we got involved at some point but they were already working it out amongst each other to yeah. before before they had really like had to say hey you know like I, this is what's going on i don't know what to do like they just kind of had a plan in place and like is this all right and we sent them a key and that was it you know yeah, it was yeah 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 <laughs> it was very easy uh, on us excuse me uh, i i just can't get up with those guys and i think you know, judging by the guys in the interviews, you know, everybody loves the broadcast. They're all they're all unique in their own way, and they're all doing a bang up job. And 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 in Joe and in Andy's case, you know, they're just starting out fresh. They're just getting better every week. So, uh, and, and and even but even Marty, you know, Marty's got new graphics. Marty, you know, he's coming up with new ideas too. So, it's all it's all it's all working really really well. And uh, really encouraged. The last thing before we go to to the you know the the, the top of the podium here. Um, is our uh, Super Dirt Car uh, Week uh, charity is uh, starts uh, April 12th. So, you know, now it's time to start 
planning that. But we are looking for sponsors to sponsor that. Again, once once our expenses are covered, um, everything goes to, to uh, it'll be the veterans this time. Uh, and, and you know, it's worthy. We've raised over fourteen thousand dollars to date. Uh, we raised over two thousand dollars for um, the Steve King Foundation. So um, they just the, the the guys in the league are awesome, and uh, I can't say enough about them. So uh, uh, just just be watching for some of that stuff coming down the pipe. But hey, buddy, you know, there's other stuff we could talk about. But I the, I want I want to get to see this rig. I sure everybody wants to see this rig. It's just like. Guys, you're not going to believe it. I'm telling you, just it's killer. Well, and, and we'll mention this during the interview, too. But please remember, both of these guys are, and prior to even knowing each other, have been contributing to our league. So it's it's really cool to see them come together. You know, Andy's getting a rig from Rob. And, oh, did I just give it away? I guess I did. But uh, if we hadn't said that already, I don't know. I was can't keep track. But yep. but anyway, it's it's just cool to see, like, these connections. And they, they show up all over the place. But, you know, the, it's this community. And it's you talk about it with the broadcasters. And now, you know, guys are working together on stuff like this. It's, it's just really cool. And uh, not to mention the fact that Rob does, I mean, it, it, you know, it's the best best work I have seen on, on a sim racing rig, hands down. So, but the one thing you, I want everybody to check out, because, I mean, Andy's not my age yet, but he's, he's an older gentleman. But this is a kid in the candy shop. Oh, yeah. On his face. And I, I totally get it, man, but this is less... It's so cool, you know, boys and their toys. It's, it never gets old. So check it out. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's jump over there and talk to uh, to Andy and, and even Rob here for a couple of minutes, and then uh, we'll see you guys back here next week for Episode 69 of the Pit Side Podcast. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Great save, everybody. Well, this is a very special uh, interview today. We are in St. Petersburg, Florida, at the headquarters of Icon Sim Sports, and uh, we're looking at Andy Piercefield, who's just got a big glow on his face. Tell <laughs> us why you're smiling, Andy. Well, first of all, I'm here to pick up my new rig. Rob's, Rob's got it done. Today's like the christening. We're here to break the champagne bottle and get this thing going. This is a, this has been a project that's been. Um, Man, it's been an exciting project. I don't know, when did we start this, Rob? October? October, November, we kicked this off. You know, I had um, I had seen seen uh, Joe's rig, and I really got excited about Icon Sim Sports, and I got talking to uh, Joe about his, and then, to be honest with you, the first time I got on, I didn't even get on the phone with Rob. We were just texting and we connected and we've connected on some other level personal levels that i probably won't get into today but me and rob have a lot of things in common and one of them was uh his passion for what he does here these rigs these rigs are custom every piece is handcrafted and i'm telling you i've been looking at pictures for three four months and drooling <laughs> in person it blows you away i mean the powder coating is perfect he, he's a he's a master welder all the welds are just pristine um it's really cool so i'm really excited to share it with you guys we're going to be loading it up and hauling it back to woodstock georgia um and i just think it's something that i really really want to make sure rob gets credit for what he does man the man is he's a craftsman when you buy a rig from him you're not buying a sim rig you're buying a piece of art well that's so speaking of the piece of art, you've got everybody salivating here. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's have an unveiling here, buddy. Wow. All right. So we're looking at it from the front view, and you can see the monitors and stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk around it, Roger, and I'm gonna poke in and show you some of the different features this rig has on it. This this photo doesn't do it justice, but it's gonna, you know, he does all the graphics. All the, all the powder coating, everything's, I mean, you'd look at the uh, the welds and the bracketry. I mean, everything is just, it, it's one of a kind. There is not another rig like this. Now, he has some other models that he can build for you that are more of what I would call a production type. But, man, this thing is just unbelievable. And there's the man himself right there. Hey, Rob, how you doing, buddy? Good, how are you guys? 
I'm this, telling you. Is this your greatest? Is this your greatest creation, Rob? It really is. Um, luckily, you know, Andy was really understanding. He wanted something completely unique, and he wasn't afraid to uh, to let me just go wild on it. I pulled out all the stops on this, and uh, <laughs> and I'm really proud of it. I'm really happy that Andy's here to pick it up and take it home, and, and really enjoy it. Now. But, uh, let him show you some of the features. Of it. All right. So, so probably the number one coolest thing about this rig. And I didn't even know this was possible, but this has the computer is it's not in a box sitting in the corner hooked up to the rig. It's actually built right in the rig. So you got the graphics card, the memory card and all the cooling and it's water cool, Roger. It's got these cooling towers where the fluid pumps through it and keeps it cool. Now, people debate over the performance enhancement from water cooling but what i will tell you is water cooling is becoming more and more the rage right now with gaming computers because the cooler you can keep the components the more they maintain their performance so i'm not a computer expert but when you're running this type of power and you can keep it cool it's going to work that much better and he's so built it right into the rig so uh, does the blue water keep it cooler than the red water, or what? What or, or is the red water the exhaust? What's going on there? That's yeah, that's so we, wicked, man. We debated on different colors. Rob, Rob's a green guy. I'm not a green guy, so we scrapped the green and went with the red. But now today, I find out he's switching his to red too. So <laughs> there you go. I just do not like green, so we went with the blue and red. And so, Andy, if you're not sure, it's fine, but it looks like to me from what we're looking at that the blue is actually cooling your CPU and you've got a separate cooling system for your for your GPU. Is that right? Absolutely. That's yeah. absolutely what it's doing. Preston. That's cool. Yep. And then down in the side here, you'll see there's some uh, the cooling fins with fans behind it. You have more cooling down there built right into the side of the rig. Wow. You come up around here. So the roof of this rig actually lifts up so a big guy like me can get in and out of there. It's all graphics up on the top. He put a mud shield up here for me, a cool ray mud shield, so I don't get hit in the face. <laughs> you open this roof up, you can get in there easier. And then what's cool on this one, I believe, is this the first time you've done the door, Rob? So he did a door. Oh, it wow. actually opens up the side where you don't have to climb over that. So you can just fold this door back, get the keyboard out of the way, fold that door and open it up. And even a big guy like me can climb in. And once you get inside here, let's put in this, we've got a button box here with all the controls. It's got integrated USB ports down here for your headset. Oh, oh, that is awesome. Wow. Here's the on button to turn the computer on. Right now he's working to put the grommet. The shifter is going to be covered by a rubber shifter grommet like it would be in the floorboard of your car. Back behind here, he has a seven inch monitor that gives me all the settings on what's going on with the, the computer. Gives you the cooling, the speed, everything that's operating back there. Got a phone bracket here for my iPhone. We got this plate up here. This is where my podium steering box is going to mount. He's put a graphic on it, so it looks like it's carbon fiber. Awesome. He's got these two fans that draw air in from the front and blow out here. These are on a, um, I don't know what the name of What's the name of it, Preston? It's a sim. I, I, I know it is a wind sim, but I think there's a, an official name for it. Sim Racing Studios. That's right. So yeah, there you go studios so it's got air that blows out of those so the faster you go the more air you get i've also got from that same company um you've heard of butt kickers well they make a shaker that sets right in the bottom of your seat it's got four shakers in oh, it. four shakers yeah awesome and you, buddy and you feel it right in your butt um and that can be adjusted for wheel spin or any of that yes. type of stuff I've got a, a single butt kicker. It's awesome, but the four in the corners really gives you a feeling of where. Yeah. Where, where now this one, Roger, is from this company, um, Sim Racing Studios, 
And it's just a 24 inch square pad you lay in the bottom of your seat. So you set right on the shakers. Very yeah. economical, really cheap, um, huh. pretty cool setup. Here's some of the little stuff that Rob does. So here's a keyboard pad. He put my logo on it and put his logo on it. Very cool. And then we're gonna have three monitors. These are 24s that are on here. When I get it back to Georgia, we'll put the three 34 inch monitors on it. Okay. And then wow. one of the things I just, I just can't get over guys is let me zoom in here best I can. This is all steel tubing, bent, welded, and powder coated. Every piece is custom made, hand fabricated. I mean, it's just unbelievable. All the fasteners are these Allen head fasteners with um, spacers around them with the blue iodizing, whatever that word is. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's unbelievable. And like here, look at the bracket that holds the, the button box. Wow. It's just beautiful. It's a, so, it's, it, it's definitely, it's a, I mean, it's, as much as being it's an awesome rig, it's a piece of art. It really is. Good. So we've already got it put away, but he had he got a company that makes banners. So when I get it back to my location, I've got, I believe it's an eight-foot banner, Rob. Yeah, it's an eight-foot banner that he had made. It wasn't even something we had talked about. Rob just went ahead and had this made. Huh. That's awesome. That is awesome. You know, it's one of them things where you can, you can, you know, I've, I've bought rigs from other guys. I've done other stuff, but I'm telling you, when you work with Rob, you, you are, you're a partner in this process and he, he works with you through each thing and he personalizes it. His daughter's in the other room right now, making me an icon t-shirt. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and that, speaking of personalized, uh, the mud monster so uh, you showed us yeah. a feature earlier show us that other feature so early in the process rob told me i had to name what was joe's called uh patriot the joe's patriot, is the yeah. patriot so i came up with the name the mud monster because you know i have a special affinity for the dirt tracks and then when i get here today i'm looking at the graphics and if you look down here on the bottom you see the two eyes there's a little mud monster down there in the graphics. <laughs> just very cool the way he does. Just these little things that he adds to it. That, um, not only is the thing hand built, one of a kind, nothing else like it. It's um, then he does. He goes above and beyond with some different things as he's talking to you through the process. It's just unbelievable what this man does with these. Um, let me flip this around real quick. But, so I had about a, I don't know, what was it, Andy? About a 10 hour drive to get down here. So we drove down here last night. Let me see if I can show you something out here. I don't know how well this is coming through, but here's one that's in the process. Kind of gives you an idea of what he does. Wow. It's just, it's just so cool, guys. It's um, you know, you see him on the commercials and you see him on his Facebook. You, you just don't get it. You don't get the um, I mean, underneath, underneath here, this is cool. Up underneath, um, this will be above where the pedals are. There's LED lighting up, in it. so it lights up where the pedals. Are. It's got these little blue lights. Um, there's so many little features that he adds to that. It's just really awesome. That's a, it's a, you know, it's it's amazing looking at that. It's just all the extra cross bracing and, and supports that are in there. It's not just, uh, you know, slapped together. It's uh, it, it ain't going anywhere. Even even with a, a rather bigger guy in the frame, it's not going to bend anywhere. So it's, it's not not not, not nobody specifically, of course. Well, I'm just thinking yeah. of something like me. <laughs> hey, hey, I can wreck this thing, and I'm going to be okay. He's got yeah. it built for for safety. So well, I'm that's, a, 
it's that struck me when you're going through it like it's it's got the uh, the framework of a nascar car you know and i'm thinking oh. this would survive a crash if we could figure out a way to mount some wheels and tires on this thing, I'd be driving it up and down the street. Don't, give, so him too, cool. don't yeah. give him too many ideas, Andy. Don't give him too many ideas. <laughs> but I'm telling you, anybody that's even considering, you got to at least give him a call and talk to him about these different. He's got all kinds of models. He can do it from the basic model. Now this is kind of his top end model. Um, you know, you can you can spend I don't know what what's the M one start out at? Well, uh, the M ones they start out about twelve, and then they can go from there depending on what accessories you want to add on. So twelve hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. So twelve hundred dollars, you can get a really nice yeah. rig. And, and, and then, think, and the big thing is, it's the same, it's the same uh, solid framework, and uh, you know that 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 the top model has so. Absolutely. Yeah, it has all the same signature features and all that. It's just a little bit more budget friendly. And that's what the M for M1 stands for is mid-level. Um, that's some more affordable for most guys who, you know, kind of racing is a passion, but it's not their top financial priority. You know, for the serious racer, that's what he lives for. This is where you go. Really. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I would think, I would think, Andy, with this rig now, there should be within a short period of time there's no excuses there should be some feature stickers on that thing well you know what me and rob were talking about it and he i i got him to sign off on a document that i gave him and i'm going to charge him back if it doesn't happen but <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely, definitely uh, um, expecting some wins with this yeah and it's, got some, it's got some great places for those feature stickers too wow but that's just awesome here's Here's the thing, guys. He's got he's he does it all here by hand. It's him and his daughter. They do it from cutting the pipe to putting on the decals to building the computer. He's done it all. You can spend as much as you want here. Um, you can go, but that twelve hundred dollar unit is a really nice rig with a seat. Yeah, and it's actually our most seat. popular one. Yeah, so twenty five of those things a year. Yeah, so that's his most popular model. And then you can spend upwards of twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars, like some crazy people do, and you can have this <laughs> rig. But it's but it, you got to remember it's the computer and everything. So if a guy's at home and he's got his steering wheel, his pedals, and his computer, he can buy one of uh, Rob's rigs and get into it. He's got a pretty economical setup, and I'm telling you, this thing is gonna last. It's gonna last for generations. Yeah, well, it's, it's not a, a, your chassis for racing. It's also a showpiece for your race room. You know, people that take it seriously, they have a whole, you know, if they're lucky, have a room dedicated to it. You know, and they have their other race memorabilia from, you know, their life of, and love of racing. And, you know, your centerpiece is your chassis in there. And, you know, like you said, it's a work of art and it's something you take pride in. Yeah, for I sure. Mean, it's the only piece that I polish on a daily basis in my house. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> Polish up my rig before I go to work. So. Got a question for what? What uh, video cards in that thing? Uh, he's got a thirty ninety uh, <laughs> hydro copper. Well, no, I mean even without all the uh, massive amounts of work you've put into it, no wonder it's taken since November. Those things aren't easy to get a hold of. Well, no, and again, that's when we mentioned the price, you know, you know, because of the cost of graphics cards these days, you know. It's a, oh yeah. Twenty-five hundred dollar graphics card. Yeah. Normally it's about fourteen, but today's prices. And, you yeah. know, components are going to come down, but for let, now we're let, still. Let me show them. Let me show them one more thing. This is the type of detail that Rob gets into. It's so cool. Look at the colored coated wiring. It's all blue and white. Went out of the computer. You know, he's got everything. It's just his detail, the attention to detail is just unbelievable. The shocks that hold the roof up when you open it, it's got little shock absorbers on each side. So it's nice and easy. I mean, you can, a two year old can pull the roof down. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that, that computer is something else. Like that, I, you know, I've been building computers for a little while, and that, that is a, that's a special piece right there. Yeah, the back end of that car's got a few bucks tied up. Yeah. <laughs> the, that back two feet, the most the expensive piece of the rig. That's, That's the where money. the money is. Yeah. You don't want Roger behind you. 
All right, yeah. guys. So. Okay, that that was great. And, yeah. Uh, I think your uh, production team is also going to put together a video when you get it home and in place they and all the, the banner up and all that stuff. Rob, you did an amazing job. Yes, again, you buddy. did. That, that's just there you go. unbelievable. And uh, I, I'm sure there's a bunch of people watching this that could be salivating because it's just... <laughs> thanks, thanks for letting us be on here today, guys. Yes, we thanks. appreciate it. Oh, uh, this timing worked out perfect. So, yeah. Uh, it's it's awesome. But uh, yeah, thanks. You have a safe trip home, Andy. And uh, thanks for what both of you guys do for our league. Seriously. Uh, yeah. Can't uh, can't say enough. So it's, it's great to see two two great. Uh, supporters of our league are working together for magic man that's absolutely <laughs> awesome so totally enjoy that andy and i'll i guess i'll be looking at those uh, red and blue lights at the back there uh, following you because that thing will be a <laughs> all right thanks hey. guys thanks roger thanks preston absolutely hey drive safe guys see you guys